talk about data models. And I just want to keep emphasizing data models are not something that just you're just going to automatically get. It doesn't just come with a flip of a button. I can't just explain it once and you just naturally, unless you're just an amazing genius, and then you're probably not looking for these videos, you probably aren't going to get data models the very first time. And so I highly recommend that you don't just look at this one video here and say, oh, I either get it or I don't get it. I'm going to link below the entire uh, grouping of videos relating to data models and I recommend you watch each of them and help as you start to apply these more and more it'll start to make sense it's a tool you should absolutely be using but it is a little difficult to understand but once you get it oh man it makes your life so much easier so please push through it it's worth taking the time to learn data models I'm here on this page settings data models I've already loaded up the uh, common information model sims uh, data models from Splunk base and to see them, I just go settings, data models. I click that. I'm going to be working on the network traffic. This page has actually a wealth of information for you. One, it lists how you need to set up your data model. It'll tell you what your names of your fields need to be in order to leverage that data model. And then it helps give you the syntax for actually querying this data model. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But I just want you to know this is where the screenshot on my page comes from. I'm looking right here and we can see this information. So let's go break down a data model. So in a general query, if you're gonna do, a, uh, as a general rule, we use data models, we're, we're gonna do some sort of statistical analysis on it, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, you're gonna look at this data. I, I've left it as a stats. You can do other things with it, but statistics is one of the easiest ways. So if I go look here and I say index equals some index, that's how you usually write. You define an index, you define a source type, and you define some field to filter on. And I've put these colors here so that you can pay attention. So when we move into data model queries, you can see that where more or less those fields pop back in. So what we've got here is index equals some index, source type equals some source type, and again, the filtering. And often, if you've seen my other videos, I'll use the word, you can filter here on the left, or later you'll use the where field or the search field. And I want you to remember that because that'll make the data model filtering make so much more sense why they do what they do. So the principle is this is filtering, and usually when you say filter, you're gonna, where this condition occurs. So some field equals some value. And then you'll end up doing a stats command, a count, or a sum, or something like that. And then you do a by, and so that you leverage, hey, what am I going to do this by? And then some form of grouping. I ho Hopefully this makes sense. If not, go look up some videos on stats. You can look up some of my videos, whatever the case may be, and understand how to write a stats command. Once um, once you've got that, now let's look at a tstats command. tstats is what you use to leverage, is a query that you can use to leverage uh, access to a data model. And tstats, all it, it's, it starts with a pipe. Um, the reason you do a pipe is if you don't put a pipe, um, we by default, this will be search. This actually should say search index, but we don't ever have to write that because it's already implied. If you put the pipe, you're telling it, don't use the search command, use something else. And the reason is stats doesn't look at, stat, uh, T stats looks at a different sort of data. That's why acceleration, it's gonna look at your accelerated data first. And so you do this pipe T stats, but you'll notice this T stats is yellow. It's the same thing here. That's where we're, get, we're taking, we're gonna do a stats command, we're gonna do a stats command over here. Difference is this is called T stats, this is called stats. And then we're gonna do a count. We're, Oh wait, there's a count right there. There's the count right here from data model. In reality, notice I've got data model and index. They're really pretty much the same thing. They're not, but for when you're trying to do these uh, queries, this it'll make it a lot easier if you think of an index and a data model is kind of the same place. Where is this data contained? The index is where is the data contained? The data model is where is the data contained? And what do I what? How do I know what my data model is? Well, I showed you that little page. There it is, index is network traffic, or in this case, it's data model is network traffic. And so I would do data model equals and write it in just exactly like that says. The difference is you have to put a from statement here. Uh, you don't have to put a from here, but it makes sense. You're getting, hey, I'm doing a statistics from this data model. I'm pulling this stuff from this index. 
And then in the tstats command, you say where some field is equal to x. What I want to do is I want to do a, I want to do the stats command from this data model where this condition meets. That's the same thing as this sum field here. So you're just basically going to replace sum field here with sum field here. Oops, sorry. I should have. They are. I didn't capitalize that. We should keep them the same. It's not really a field, but anyway, point is this field and this field are the same. And you're going to do whereby. And then you're going to do a, um, there is a little caveat to this because notice we don't have a source type written here. The source type is all traffic, allowed traffic. And you're going to see these different fields. Those are your fields here, but you must call them more like an object oriented program. Source type dot field, source type dot field. So in reality, it's probably better written as source type dot some field. And I should turn this green. Um, and you'll see that as we go give examples. And then we do, there's this little by command, group by, and then some grouping. And you'll have to remember it's also source type dot some grouping. Fields don't exist as written right here. So if I look back, this is actually all traffic dot host, all traffic dot source, all traffic dot app, all traffic dot channel, all traffic dot desk business. You don't just call this field by itself. It is always the second value here, that little source type, whatever you want to call it. And you can see it here, all underscore traffic. Dot app. These are all children of this uh, data set. And so you're actually calling a data set. We call it source types in normal Splunk, and it's a data set in the data model. So let's go see that in principle. I've written down here, and this is the general principle. I'll have a little comment up here. This is the general way you write a stats command, and this is how you write a tstats command. All right, so what I want to do is I want to do a command where I get all the destination IPs that have been reached by a, so, uh, by a certain IP. So I want to go, I'm going to give a source IP and I want to know all the destination IPs that it's reached out to. So let's put that into practice. Here I already wrote the query to save time. Here again, the same format, and you'll notice we got index equals lame training source IP equals 10.0.0.12, so that'll be my source IP, and I write a stats count by destination IP. That should be pretty obvious what's going on, how that works. Um, if I write this, we run it, and we get 75 events with 21 statistical values, meaning if you added up all these counts, you would get 75, but there are 21 distinct destination IPs. So I'm going to put 75 and 21 here just so we don't forget what was there. 75, 21, because if this query is the same thing, we should get the exact same results back. So what we need to do, we're going to do a tstats. Well, first thing we do is we write pipe tstats. We're doing a count, so we bring the count down here. From where? Well, there we're looking at index lame training. We're going, our stuff is in the data model, network traffic. We know that because it says right here, network traffic. So we're going to put from data model, network traffic where, what do we want? Source IP is this. Well, we know that we can't just call source IP. It might be a field in here. There is a field called source IP, but in order to use it, you must call the data set, which is all underscore traffic dot. So if we do that, it, we see all traffic dot source IP equals 10.2. Basically same format, just a little different. You put that data set in there. And then they did a by dest IP. We do a group by dest IP. Remember though, you can't just write destination IP in. You gotta put that data set so it's all traffic dot dest IP. So if I take this query and I run it, remember it was 75 and 21. I have 75 events coming back and 21 sets. It gave me the exact same values. So this query and this query are identical. All right, let's do a different one. What if I want to get the bytes in? I want to get the, I want to see, um, yeah, I want to sum up the bytes in for how many bytes in were coming in to each destination IP. So we'd be, lame training, source IP of 10.0.12, and now we're just going to put the stat sum bytes in, count by dest IP. That should be pretty clear if you've gone through any of my things on stats. 
Uh, hopefully that makes sense to you. We come in, we write this command. And now we should have a field where it's summing up the amount of bytes in from this IP to this destination IP from this address. So let's write that in tstats. Same concept, we start with a pipe tstats command. And just like we wrote sum here, we write sum here. And they wrote bytes in. Is there a bytes in field? Scroll down to the bottom. Yes, there is. There's a bytes in. But again, it belongs to this data set. So don't forget to call it all traffic dot bytes in. And then we do a count. So we got just like we wrote it here, we write it here from data model network traffic. Just like that, we're going to grab the data model. Remember what the data model is? It's written right up here from data model where. Notice we did our, and we did our filtering here, source IP, same thing. We just do it where, group by, all traffic, nothing else changed. The only thing between this query and this query that changed was this little field. The only thing that has to change over here is we just put a sum right there. It goes right after the T stats, which is exact. I mean, if I took this T away, this would look just like this right over here. So don't get yourself too worked up around it. Uh, it's not that hard. It is a little different change of way you think about things, but it is, it's not that difficult and you'll get used to it. I mean, it seems a little odd at first, but once you start to see all the benefits that come from it, it it'll change the way you ever do, you do Splunk searches. Um, but anyway, so if I run this, this had 75 and 21 results. 1001 came back with 155335. So let's see if it, we get the same results here. 155335. It's it's the same query. The difference you're going to find, I just want to point this out for those who haven't quite grasped it, the data model. If I ran this over a large period of time, this will run orders of magnitude faster than writing this Splunk query, especially if I choose to turn on data acceleration, which to turn on data acceleration is really simple. All I have to do is hit edit acceleration and I can turn on data acceleration and any data that's been accelerated will search at 10%, 1% the time that it takes to search um, using this method. And the other beauty is this here is looking at one single index, one source IP. This here happens to be doing the same thing because the way I restricted it. But with, as I mentioned in other videos, the beauty of a data model is I can take my lame training uh, source IPs. I can take my, um, I can take my Cisco firewall. I can take my sensors. I can take anything that's generating network traffic and I can put it all into the same data model and query all of that data using the exact same fields. I don't have to deal with, well, in this index it's called this, and in this index it's called this, and let's merge all the pieces together. No, a data model puts all of that nice and consolidated so that you can then ultimately, your goal is to write dashboards that use data models. And so when you add a new data source, you put the work into making your stuff fit the data model, and then your dashboards just automatically work versus having to build a dashboard for this data source and a dashboard for this data source and a dashboard for this data source. I hope this is starting to come clear. You can start to see why data models are so powerful. You want to leverage them as much as possible. They are totally under leveraged in most places I've been. Uh, they will gain you massive advantages. One of the powers of enterprise security is the data model that it uses. Unfortunately, and the sad part is because so few people know how to use data models, you end up getting yourself buying Splunk Enterprise Security, which is a great product, don't get me wrong, but much of it can be leveraged without ever using the paid version. You can do all this stuff on your own, and the majority of the work, the hard stuff is what we're doing right here. Um, then you just de you, you can create queries that search against those. You can create one alerting type thing against a data model, and it just searches all of your data. It's just it just makes things so much better and makes you so much more efficient, um, improves the work. Plus, as you said, you can data accelerate. I've said this enough times, I'm not, I can't repeat it. I'm not gonna repeat it one more time. I just want you to know, I love data models. I encourage you, watch this video, watch the channel below, the, uh, uh, the, 
the collage of videos I put together on data models and start going through them. They're not scary. They're not a big deal. It just takes a little bit of work. Play with them and you'll get it. Um, I hope this helps you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. Um, I hope this helps you from becoming a from being a lame analyst to becoming a Splunk Ninja.